What's the point of a game engine if not to make games? So we made one. The very first playable game by Studio Cherno, a remake of an arcade classic. In this video, we're going to talk about what it was like to make this game in Hazel, our in-house game engine. Stick around till the end of the video to see how you could play this game for yourself. And now, let's begin. Hey, so guys, my name is Shono. Today, we're going to be looking at a game that Tim made in Hazel. You know what? You made the game. My hair's gone for some reason. Why don't you just take over this video? It's falling apart anyway. Hey, what's up, guys? My name's Not the Cherno. I'm Tim, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how I made the Space Invaders clone in Hazel. My job is a bit more unique, since out of everybody on the Hazel core team, I'm the only one that's not developing the engine, but rather using it to make games. And let me tell you about the fun experience of doing that. But before that, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Tim and I study computer science at university and for the last eight months, I've been working as an engineer on the Hazel team making games. Because I'm the only one on the team doing that, not only do I have to write all the C-sharp code that makes the game run, I also have to make all the art using Blender and Photoshop. Before I started working here, I had no digital art experience. I mean, just look at this 3D model I made. This is meant to be a spaceship. This is terrible. One of the great resources that helped me learn this quickly was Skillshare. Skillshare has a bunch of great classes on these topics and their Photoshop classes in particular are great and helped me learn this quickly. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community with thousands of classes on pretty much any topic you could think of. From creative ones like art and photography all the way to business and marketing. They've got it all. It's honestly so easy and inspiring to browse through Skillshare and find an interesting class. And the best part is they're all concise and high quality with bite-sized episodes that you can quickly get through in your downtime. They're also an excellent way to unwind after a busy day, something I really like using Skillshare for, with their many relaxing illustration classes, but more recently this class, literally about plants. You can have a browse yourself for free. The first 1,000 people who click the link in the description of this video and join Skillshare will get a one month free trial. Huge thank you to Skillshare, as always, for sponsoring this video. So once I told you that you were making a Space Invaders clone, where did you begin? I opened up Unity. Um, Cause you know, everything is easy to do in Unity, right? I made the game in Unity, I made a prototype in Unity, and from there, once I was comfortable with the process of making Space Invaders, I took it to Hazel. Yeah, so one of our goals with Hazel is to try and make the workflow for making a game as simple, as easy, as intuitive as possible. And so by making the game first in Unity, Tim was able to learn about the workflow of making the game in the first place. And then we could hopefully improve upon that in Hazel as well as like get some much needed features into the engine to make yeah, that possible. Exactly. And that's kind of how game engine development works. Like the things that are being made with the engine drive the development of the engine itself. Yeah, I exactly. And like drawing from my experience working at EA as well, like it was very common for Battlefield, for example, to be like, okay, the direction for the game is this, like we need this major new destruction like technology. And then the Frostbite team will be like, okay, we're gonna work with you now to kind of implement that tech. So this is actually kind of similar, but on a much smaller scale. Yeah, yeah. So once you had that prototype in Unity, what did you do next? So I actually took it to Hazel. I started making the game in Hazel, and as you can see, the first playable commit didn't even have collision detection. It just had like bullets being created and shooting up. And like later when collision was added, like they, there was destruction of entities and so on. What do you think of Hazel? I like Hazel. I like Hazel not just as a product, but uh, the team that, that is building it, I want to say. Okay, so as opposed to something like Unity you were saying about features in Hazel, mm. it's good because you have a link to the engine team. Exactly, yeah. So if something is missing in the engine, uh, I can talk to the Cherno or Peter or like with Jay, for example, back when I was doing audio stuff and I'm able to get like support from the team that's developing the technology and understands it really well. Not just really well, they understand it perfectly because they're the ones that developed it. Sure beats documentation. That's right, yeah, which we still don't have. <laughs> what happens if Hazel doesn't have a feature you need? You just ask for it. Yeah, that's right. So during the course of development, for example, prefabs weren't a thing in Hazel. And for a game like Space Invaders, where there's multiple identical entities being instantiated, essentially, they had to be like created and the mesh had to be copied from a entity that existed in the scene. So the workflow for that was just terrible. And like prefabs was definitely the most natural solution to this. 
And so for this game, in the middle of development, Jan introduced the concepts of prefabs to the to the Hazel. <laughs> to the Hazel. You remind me of those people who are like, the Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> the Ukraine. <laughs> That's literally what I thought of as well when I said that. Oh. the Hazel. So so what is what's a prefab for those who don't know? Do I know? That's that's a good question. Do I even know? You have to pretend um, you know for the okay. sake of the video. A prefab is... I know you're a paid actor, but... <laughs> that is genuinely what I am. But I specifically requested an actor who knew what prefabs were. Right. So, you might have to talk to the agency, the agency about that one, yeah. So prefab is exactly what it sounds like. It's something that's been prefabricated. Prefabs are good for what? <laughs> Prefabs allow us to dynamically instantiate entities during a game's runtime, during a scene's runtime, that like already have component data, hierarchies, all of that okay. stuff set up. So prefabs. <laughs> yeah, so prefabs allow you to dynamically instantiate entities during a game's runtime that already has all the necessary component data, um, and that saves you know computational power during runtime instead of like adding all these components during runtime and then wasting like both script code on that and, and computational power, whereas that could be just saved already. <laughs> I like this computational power. <laughs> because like, well, the other thing is, I think that's just wrong because <laughs> it doesn't exactly save computational power because like- Technically, you when still you need look to create under the this hood, entity. it, it's it just, does, yeah. It just makes the, the user like workflow a lot easier. Right. Because it allows you to just make something once, like a template, and then spawn it in wherever you want in the world, and it's like already ready to go. Because right. how else would you, you know, compose that entity dynamically during a game? Like you need to spawn a bullet, it has to be this, this material, this script, this everything, this collider. How would you spawn that? Like mm -hmm. if you didn't have prefabs? Mm -hmm. You would have to essentially like write some code that would create an entity and set it up and that mm -hmm. code would have to be called every time. Mm -hmm. Well in Hazel we got like a Lua, right? That's what describes a prefab. Lua? Got... <laughs> Not Lua. We literally what? don't use Lua. <laughs> <laughs> we use Lua for something. Yeah, for pre-make. <laughs> Okay, that's... I've, I've seen that somewhere. I've seen that file extension somewhere. So another thing that was added during the development of this game was dynamic meshes. The workflow prior to this, for example, with the Shattered Alien in particular, the workflow prior to this was to create 15 different, like, entities, and, like, each of them has a mesh component, and then manually create a hierarchy in Hazel. But each of those entities had to be manually exported one by one from Blender and then like generate a mesh source from that. So each each piece of the shattered mesh was its own entity that you had to manually set up. Yes. How was that? Uh, it was gruesome, gruesome, especially when something went wrong and then you had to re-export the whole thing. Like that was pain. So, so now that we have dynamic meshes, we can just import the entire thing at once. Exactly, yeah, like, and it's really easy. Um, one thing that's hopefully coming in the future is like, multi-entity editing at the same time. So for example, at the moment it's still like a limitation that you have to go on each one, place a script component, type a script name in. Um, in the future, we're gonna have a much easier workflow around that. But compared to what it was back then, where it takes like 30 minutes probably to make one prefab, um, it's a lot easier now, yeah. One thing that we were missing that's essential to any game is loading scenes. Imagine having a game where the only gameplay is the main menu. That was kind of the problem where we were at. So we needed to be able to transition from the main menu to the gameplay scene, or from the main menu to the settings and vice versa. And so when we realized this was a limitation of the agent, that was added probably within a day. And so that's the kind of cool and dynamic environment that like you get to experience with Hazel, is because it's a... This isn't a recruitment <laughs> video. All right, so how was like Hazel's stability and crashes and how much work did you lose? A lot. You mean not much? <laughs> I lost like literally, a couple of times I lost a day's worth of work. More than once. Flip that pillow if you see the black mark. Like, All right. yeah. <laughs> from the top. Hazel, back in the day, had less memory leaks, and so you could work like a day without... <laughs> You're supposed to say this thing better. <laughs> I'm saying how it is, yeah. Back in the day, Hazel could run for a long time without crashing. 
and you know I was not in the good practice of saving my work back then as I am well practiced now <laughs> save after virtually anything and before playing a scene definitely in case like the engine crashes on me during runtime <laughs> cut <laughs> cut point is more than once I've lost a day's worth of work like a full day's worth of work that was back in the terrible measures like that was that was horrible like oh man now it's a lot nicer to lose a day of work that's that's really the goal of any engine to make it really nice to lose work would you say that this lost work has contributed to a better game because you've had a second chance at making the same thing and so you've made it better i would say it's definitely formulated me as a better person throughout the process of this my patience and my tolerance has grown and i've just in general become a nicer person to be around i'm like less irritated because of like my work with hazel and the patience that it's produced in me so in summary it's good for a game engine to not have an undo system or and, and also crash yes yes because it, it makes you a better person you know that's it that's all it took to make the game happen Hope you all enjoyed this new format video. The Tim format. <laughs> Just like the rocket game that I made in an hour, you guys can check out that video up there, by the way. This will initially be only released to the partner tier of my Patreon supporters, the full source code and assets. We really wanna ship this game like for free and distribute it to all of you to play. That's the goal. But Hazel at the moment just doesn't have a way to actually like package and, and ship a game. We're working on that as we speak. As soon as that's ready, we'll make it available to you guys for free. Yeah, there's plenty of like optimization, packaging, other work that needs to be done to be able to actually actually ship this game. Maybe we'll put together like a little road to distribution series. That might be mm. fun. Also, big news. Studio Cherno is doing Latum Day 50. Yep, we'll be live streaming the entire thing, doing the game jam, three days, all of the Studio Cherno, which includes Peter in Sweden. We'll be making a game using Hazel and live streaming all of it. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for supporting. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.